The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. In 1778, Friedrich Anton Mesmer astounded Paris and the medical world by introducing what he termed a new medical theory, the theory he called animal magnetism. Although he was discredited and accused of being a practitioner of black magic, mesmerism was to continue to fascinate medical men till it flowered into the present-day wholly scientific and important branch of medicine called hypnotism. That is today. But a century and a half ago, it was misunderstood and misused, with many of the men who practiced it unprincipled and little better than sorcerers. This is the story of one such. Dr. Nugent, you may now wake up. What? Did you say something, Professor Valdemar? Quite a good deal in the last five minutes, Doctor. Good Lord. Is it five minutes since you put me out? Believe it or not. In another few minutes, I'm going to let you judge for yourself. I am going to let you put me under the influence. mystery drama, A Living Corpse, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Robert Dryden and Kirk Peterson. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Have you ever been hypnotized? It's a strange, weird, and terrifying feeling to know that you have lost your identity, blanked out, that you have still been in your own world, and yet not of it. A powerful, benign tool in the hands of today's doctors, rigorously trained, but once, as recently as a hundred years ago, it was a secret art shunned by the reputable and condemned by the devout. Yet, it had its devotees. Men of inquiring scientific minds, as well as the charlatans. And the legion of believers who have followed the lure of the occult down strange paths since the dawn of time. Oh, oh, who the devil is Oh, Professor Aldemar, it's up the police. Calm yourself, Mrs. Salisbury. No need for alarm. But for the moment, it seems we must wait to bring you relief. I will turn off the pacificator for the moment while I answer the door. Oh, if it's the police. Mrs. Salisbury, the art I practice is not illegal. However much it may be frowned upon by the know-nothings. Besides, I shall close the door to the room and leave, and you will be quite safe. Very well, I'm coming. Coming. But better make sure. Who is it? Dr. Craig Nugent. By your appointment, Professor. Oh, yeah, one moment. Enter softly, my young physician, and keep your voice low. You were expecting me? Yeah, earlier, much earlier. Your arrival now is awkward. I'm sorry. I I was held up on a case. Uh, If it is inconvenient, I I could return at some other time. No, 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 no. As a matter of fact, perhaps it works out all to the good. I have a patient with me I was just about to put under magnetic influence. You will have the opportunity to see and observe. Uh, Come into this room, but softly, sir. Very well, Professor Valdemar. I would have you in the same room, but the lady is anxious to preserve her anonymity. However, if you will come to this spot in the wainscoting, allow me. Just slide this small shield to one side, and it opens the eye on a portrait in the next room. You will well be able to observe the technique and practice of mesmerism. At that moment, every instinct within me screamed in silent warning for me to run. 
my venal ambition and unbounded curiosity nailed me to the floor. I put my eye to the back of the portrait's eye, and as clearly as if I were present in the adjoining room, I watched in jealous awe. One human being attained total mastery over another. Oh, what was it? Who? Oh, nothing, nothing at all. An errand boy I sent him packing. Let me start the pacificator. Uh. Now I want you to relax. Oh, I can't. I can't relax. Of course you can. I want you to watch the pacificator over my left shoulder. Oh, the light is so bright. Only to begin with. Just watch, listen to the sound, and watch the spinning disc. Relax, relax. You want to go to sleep. 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 Yes. Look deep into my eyes. Feel the magnetic influence spread to you and around you, warming and relaxing and making you drowsy. You are falling asleep. You can't fight it. Your eyes are drooping, drooping. The tension is draining away. And now, as I lay my hand on you and touch you, you are asleep. Sound asleep. You will lift your right arm to shoulder height and hold it there steadily. So... <coughs> Well, Dr. Nugent, are you still there at the peephole? You need have no fear of speaking up. She will not hear you. <laughs> You're certain she won't? Just as certain as I am that she will continue to hold out her hand and arm straight from the shoulder, no matter what weight is placed on it. Yeah. Observe. That heavy coal scuttled. She couldn't possibly hold that with her arm as it is. Oh, but she will, and she can. Look. That's impossible. With mesmerism, nothing is impossible. So. <coughs> she need hold this no longer. The point is proven. You may put your arm down now, Mrs. Salisbury. That's right. Now, do you still have your headache? Yes. My temples are bursting. It's like a knife plunging into my brain. If I could only get some relief. Ah, you say that you would pay anything for that relief? Anything. Mm, very well. Tomorrow, you will remember this when I wake you up. Tomorrow, you will go to the bank and take out $10,000 and deposit it in my name as the Boston Federalist. I promise I will do as you say, if you will only give me relief. I lay my hand on your brow. I pass it gently to and fro. And as I do so, the pain diminishes, oh. diminishes, oh. till now it is gone. Yes. Oh, yes. It is gone. Oh, what joy. What peace. It will not return. When I wake you, you will know that it will never return. It will never Return. And you will forget everything we have said about the money. Uh, Till tomorrow, at ten o'clock exactly, you will make the transaction. I had watched all the foregoing in open-mouthed amazement. A woman cured of incurable migraine headache, for when she woke it was gone. 
a woman paying him fifteen dollars for the session, but who had promised to deposit ten thousand the next day? Stunning revelation upon stunning revelation, and the most stunning of all, why this tall, cadaverous, cough-ridden man should reveal his secrets and his criminality to me. I had not long to wait for the answer to this. Well, Dr. Craig Nugent, <coughs> were you edified and intrigued? Both. And astounded. But... Yes? Well, at the moment, as a doctor, perhaps intrigued more than anything. Uh, that cough of yours, sir, is that the reason you bid me here? Yes. <coughs> and no. <coughs> Shall we sit and talk? First, I would prefer to osculate your chest, sir. Form some opinion of... Forget it. Wiser physicians than you have examined me. <coughs> the consumption is too well advanced. My death is inevitable. And in very short order, there is no hope. Then why am I here? If you will sit with me, doctor, because I suddenly find myself weak and tired, I will attempt to explain. Uh, but first, let me ring for my wife. I am sure you would enjoy a glass of port as we talk. In any case, I am anxious to have you meet her. I'm sure the pleasure and the privilege is all mine. The idle phrase gagged and stung in my throat. Luana Valdemar was, as always, that vision of loveliness, scarce above my own age. Violet eyes, great and deep enough for a man to drown in, skin that seemed translucent to an inner glow, and, and a dark cloud of jet black hair tumbling to her waist that set my heart pounding so loudly I, I thought all three of us must hear it. In one first look... I was in love, enchanted, and in chains. What will you have, Dr. Norton? Ah, oh, I... Uh... Port is for older men. May I suggest this brandy? Uh, my dear, this is a bright young doctor whom I expect will loom large in my... <coughs> in our future. Dr. Craig Nugent, may I present my wife, Luana? Your servant, madame. Ah, no. I am yours. Will it be the brandy? Whatever you suggest. Luana's suggestions turn out to be more like commands. <laughs> uh, leave us, Luana. We have much to talk about. Don't stay up too late. I hope to meet you again, Dr. Nugent. I sincerely hope so, Madame Valdemar. You will. You will. Now, off with you. Whatever you command, my husband. You are not drinking your brandy, Doctor. Mm. Oh, oh no, I... Yes, sir. It is uh, excellent brandy. I... I don't quite understand why I was invited here in the first place. Of course you don't. I think if you will entertain my proposition, you and I have a great deal to offer each other. For a beginning... <coughs> Excuse me. If you would pour me some, some more port. Of course. <coughs> And once I have soothed this accursed scratching throat of mine, I can make a start about explaining... <laughs> explaining all about the end. As he reaches for the glass, Professor Waldmar's tall, gaunt figure is shaken by yet another bout of the racking cough that snatches away all his breath. In medical dismay, young Dr. Craig is helpless to do anything to relieve him or to imagine what on earth kind of service he can offer this strange and half-dead man. I shall return shortly with Act Two. <laughs> 